Do you know what this place was used for? It feels familiar, but I'm not certain. The Empire was vast. I did not know every corner of it. And much was built after I became a portal. However, Takan would not build such a place without something precious to protect. Whatever that is, we have to find it before Galvin does. Hmm. This pattern resembles the transporter device Petty Officer Maris used to escape the Resolute. Portal 63? You wish to make use of this device? It's a transporter of some kind? It allows Takan to move through space instantly a short distance. Very convenient. I will activate the system for you. Where does it go? I'm not sure. The markings here must be from after my time. Well, only one way to find out. Soil. Just... Soil. It's not from this planet, nor any planet in the Federation database. Why is this here? This is soil from the homeworld. Our capital system. This isn't an arsenal. It's a temple of the ancients. Sacred ground to the Takan. I took my oath as a guardian of the Empire in a place just like this.
sorry. This is the first I've seen of anything new from the Takan Empire in a very long time. I'm sure you're familiar with the feeling, that sense of loss. I thought I was ready for it, but it cuts to the core of your being, even with your defenses up. I'm so sorry to put you through this. I know it must be difficult. Don't apologize. I'm glad I came. This means a great deal to me. Can you use this to find out more about what Galvin is after? The information's encrypted. I can only discern that it's a warship. No. It's the Aphelion. Perhaps the most powerful Taconian ship ever built. I can't access the full funnel, but looking through the ship's schematics, it appears to be equipped with some sort of experimental, highly advanced transporter technology. Transporter technology? For what? Captain, you better come see this. of it, I'd say someone left in a hurry. Probably right around the time we showed up. seen these before, in the other vault. And if all of those are the same as this, then there must be... Hundreds of millions, if not billions. All that remains of the Dakon civilization. A distinct person, encapsulated in crystalline form. Preserved for all eternity. Given the size of this vault, there must have been tens of thousands of these cases, representing billions and billions of Takan. A threat on a truly massive scale, one your Federation can't easily contend with. What you have to understand is, these life forms were preserved for the benefit of the Takan civilization, as a means of safeguarding the health and well-being of any Takan, should they fall prey to or injury. They were never intended to be used for this purpose. There you are wrong. This was always their purpose. To restore the glory that was lost. Congratulations on your first victory in battle, Captain Rydek. You killed a great many of my compatriots, some that I've known for millennia. Are you proud of how much death you've caused? Each Dekan life is precious, irreplaceable. Centuries of knowledge and culture lost with each one you murder. I was protecting my crew. It's regrettable to take any life. But when someone threatens galactic civilization, force is the correct response. And I suppose it worked. For now. Thankfully, I don't have to convince you of anything. We'll all be on the same side soon enough. You can't just bioform whoever you want. Not without a fight. Ah, 
but that's just it. There won't be a fight. In fact, most won't even know what's happened. One minute you're standing there as you. The next, you're standing here as one of us. He's talking about mass transformation. That's what the Aphelion was built for. A transporter. It'll reconstitute your DNA and bioform you into a Takan in the blink of an eye. This is what they'll use as ammunition. In a manner of speaking, yes. Of course, that's the simple version. But the end result will be the same. You're talking about a crime against sentient life on a mass scale. Oh, an evolutionary process where the strongest and most capable survive. The Aphelion is on its way here as we speak. Now it's only a matter of time. You can't delay that which is inevitable. Which makes your next decision fairly simple, brother. You are, after all, a portal. I am. Your sole purpose is to serve as a guardian of the Takan Empire. But you stand here surrounded not by your fellow Takan, but by members of the Federation. By people who deny our fundamental right to exist. You swore an oath to protect the Empire. And I can only assume that's why you're here. You have the audacity to suggest we're trying to deny your right to exist? You attacked us! Merely a demonstration of our strength and the futility of fighting the inevitable. Which side are you on? Captain Rydak, long-range sensors suggest a massive spacecraft approaching in the distance. The time has come. I hope we speak again, brother. Estimated time to contact, six minutes and counting. We can't stay here. We have to get back to the ship. And we have to preserve these souls. We must take them back to your ship. Those crystals are ammunition to be used against us. We have to destroy them. Bombard the site from orbit. I'll decide once we're safely aboard the Resolute. For to transport. my eyes because of you. I committed mutiny for you. But if you bring those things on board, I'll have no choice but to resign. If they're taken to the Aphelion, they will be forced into new bodies, brought back to life in a way they never asked for. They're not living beings, but they're still dangerous. And if you don't make decisions to protect us, we're gonna end up like Solano. You, me, the entire crew, we're all next. Two minutes and counting. It's headed straight toward the vault. The Aphelion is coming into view now, Captain. On...
I would remind you, those life forms are to come. Not science, to come. They're not your enemy. Right or wrong, history will judge you for this moment. Transport the storage crystals aboard the Resolute. Did I hear that right? That's an order. The storage crystals are on board in our cargo bay. Thank you. I won't forget this. I hope you realize what you've done. We don't need another captain who's gonna risk our lives just to feed their ego. This ship and this crew come first. Lieutenant. She has to hear it. This isn't about me. It's our duty as Starfleet officers to protect life, wherever and however we find it. And I couldn't let them fall into Galvin and Sidron's hands. I had to do it this way. And to think, I used to look up to you. The Aphelion is targeting us, approaching rapidly. They hit us with that bioforming ray, and it's over. Maximum warp, get us out of here. Where, Captain? Anywhere but here, now! Thank you. I'm not sure one of my kind would have done for you what you did for me. I did not expect a show of mercy. I hoped, but you could have just as easily left me to my fate. See, that's... that's just one of the differences between Starfleet and you. Scions of the Flame. Our mission is to help when we can, even if that means helping our enemies. There is honor in that. Now that we're safe on your ship, I think you were right to bring her. Things seem a little different now than they did in the heat of battle. There's more than one way to deal with messy situations. You can't save everyone, but you can try. Didn't want to regret this one. And you've spared me some regret as well. Maybe there is hope. Surprises here. But your shoulders separated. If you come with me to Sick Bay, we can get you fixed up in no time. Uh thank you. I'll find you afterwards. You two, check in at your stations. This thing isn't over yet. Tell me, did any crew from the Zeldi survive? Well, since the Lydian ships have no escape pods, I think it was just us. I see. I thought so. I had a partner on board. After this mission, she and I were meant to... Does it matter? All that matters now is making the Takan pay for what they've done. We'll stop them. I 
promised. Diaz. Yeah? Did you see our people over there? Miranda? Kapoor? Hauser? We saw Miranda and Kapoor, but they're bioform. And as far as I know, there's no way to undo it. It means they're not our friends anymore. If they attack us? We'll have to stop them. No matter what it takes. Yeah. I, I guess we have to be ready for that. You're really making us proud out there, Diaz. The lower decks don't get a lot of glory. I'm just getting started. She was a good little escape pod. Not that I want another ride like that anytime soon. I can't believe it, but I'm actually looking forward to seeing Chobok. Not that I'd expect this kind of welcome from him, but I can just imagine the look on his face. You know what? I want to see him too. It'll be nice to get one piece of normalcy. I'm sure we can count on him for that. I can't believe it! You evaded the Takan! Ejected their warp cores and lived to talk about it. That about sums it up. They're going to be teaching this at the academy for years to come. I mean it. Everybody's going to learn how you pulled it off. At the academy? Oh, well, I, I wouldn't know about that. After this, you'll probably get a personal invitation to show them how it's done. I heard about Bell. Is Miranda. As far as we know, she's still out there. Well, I know Captain Rydek will do her best to get her back. Hold on. Rydek? What about Captain Solano? He was turned into a Takan. Rydek had to take over. She's a hell of an officer. But none of us have been up against anything like this. No one has. Not in half a million years. <laughs> I guess there's never a dull moment around here, huh? You're telling me it's not always like this? Not if we can help it. <clears throat> Talk to you later. It is agreeable to see you again. Is that so? It was by no means a certainty that you would return to duty here. It is agreeable to see you as well, sir. I concur. You should know your absence has left engineering terribly short-handed. During your sojourn, this department has fallen unacceptably behind schedule. On both regular and irregular duties. There's been a whole lot of irregularity going around. I gotta admit, it's a little flattering that this place went to hell so fast without me. So, uh, I'll take that as a compliment. I believe factors other than your absence were also to blame. Normally, I would assign you to one of the many pressing repair tasks. But, given your experience on board the Zeldi, I have suggested you join the senior staff briefing as we determine our next course of action. You can commence your maintenance shift afterwards. I tended to an Elidian earlier. Major Sarlet Arminta? Ah, yes. I met him at the negotiations. I never would have imagined I'd be here, on the same ship, working together with our oppressors. But now that I am, I can imagine a future where the Hotari and Elidians are no longer enemies. I always hoped for peace, but it seemed so far away. There's still a lot of bad blood. Peace is often fleeting. If there's a chance, you should take it. 
Peace with our former enemies may be hard for some to accept, but it's what my people need. Oh, that's coming along nicely. Thank you, Tylus. I'll take it from here. We're almost done. I have to brief Ambassador Spock in a few minutes. Ambassador Spock can wait. You have some fences to mend. Personally, I'm against the needless destruction of innocent life forms. So I'm glad you transported the Taconian crystals onto the ship. But Lieutenant Bedrosian obviously feels otherwise. And right now, you need the full support of your bridge crew. Being an effective leader requires trust. But an issue as divisive as this can create discord. We all know I'm new to this. So it's nice to have your support. Even when we don't agree or there's something I don't like, I'll let you know. But you'll always have my support. It's been a chaotic last few days for everyone. You need to name a new first officer in preparation for what's coming. You'll have to work to regain Lieutenant Bedrosian's trust, but if she's removed from consideration, it comes down to Westbrook or Irma. Obviously, there are pros and cons with each, but ultimately, the decision is yours. Commander Westbrook has seniority and was hoping to be Captain Solano's first officer. Ermot has the knowledge and experience that makes him more than qualified. You really couldn't go wrong with either of them. To be honest, Lieutenant Bedrosian feels like the perfect fit for the position. I would otherwise agree. But given what happened, that'll take some work on your part. You're as good as new. Thank you, Dr. Duvall. Always nice to have a captive audience. Really shouldn't keep Ambassador Spock waiting. Captain. I'll meet you inside. I'm here to officially tender my resignation from the crew of the USS Resolute. I cannot in good conscience continue to serve aboard this ship, not while the interests of the enemy take precedent over the safety of the crew. Listen, Lieutenant. I understand how you feel, and I respect your opinion. You're one of the most valuable officers on the bridge, which is why I cannot accept your resignation. I'm sorry, Captain, but I expected as much, which is why I already submitted my letter of resignation to Starfleet Command. Door is always open if you change your mind. We'll have Ambassador Spock via subspace shortly. Thank you, Mr. Armand. I'll notify Lieutenant Bedrosian we're about to begin. That won't be necessary. Petty officers Diaz and Edsalar have first-hand experience with our adversaries. I thought it advantageous for them to join this briefing. I understand this is unusual, but I trust you have no objections. Talk about moving up in the world. Excellent idea, Mr. Chovak. They deserve to be here. In all seriousness, what Diaz and Edsalar accomplished aboard this LV is nothing short of remarkable. They're both to be commended. Not only for surviving against incredible odds, but for helping our efforts against these Scions. You know, Carter deserves most of the credit. None of us would have made it without his help. We'd all be bioformed by this point. Well, there were way more people involved than just me. Not only Petty Officer Edsalar, but... We had help from an Elidian officer named Arminta as well. Interesting. Ambassador Spock is ready for you. Put him through. Captain Rydek, your recent change in station certainly warrants mention, and I trust you to faithfully execute your expanded duties. Right now, we must keep our attention on the clear and present danger that lies ahead, the Takan and their warship. The closest populations are the Hotari and Elidian systems, and they are likely the first targets for mass bioforming. After that, lies Federation space. I have advised Starfleet Command to send an impromptu battle group to intercept and assist you, but that will take time. You are our first line of defense. 
and with our shield algorithms compromised, we are at a great disadvantage. I'm glad to hear the battle group is en route, Ambassador. With what we're up against, we're gonna need all the help we can get. And you will have it. Remember, our strength is drawn from our ability to work together towards a common goal. Have we made any progress in finding a way to defend ourselves from the Aphelion's bioforming weapon? Currently, our shields will not protect us, but I am compiling all of the information the away team gathered on the Zeldi and cross-referencing it against our own, as well as Portal 6-3's methods. The away team is sitting right here. They survived without getting bioformed, so we know it's possible. So, what's the secret? How do we defend ourselves? Is there a weakness we can exploit? Something we can do to avoid getting bioformed. I wish I could tell you the solution. But the truth is, there is no easy answer. There's no defense against bioforming. One-on-one -on -one or on a mass scale. At least, not that I know of. Hmm. You may not be able to stop it, but it might be possible to slow it down. It's too soon to say for sure, but... We've had some promising indications that Deridium can delay the bioforming process. Deridium? It's not a cure. It's not going to bring anyone back we've already lost. But Deridium is a cell stabilizer, so it has the potential to slow down the onset of physical and mental changes, if not entirely prevent them. And it might be the only ship in the fleet with this much Deridium on hand. In fact, a lot of ships wouldn't have any. You say that it slows the process, but this doesn't actually stop the Takan from taking over, does it? Correct. I can't be 100% certain, but it appears this is only a short-term solution. Also, it requires a much larger dose to be effective. We don't have enough Deridium on board to protect the whole crew. We barely have enough to protect everyone in this room. Sounds like it won't do us much good, then. The use case I'd suggest is that it buy a little time for an officer or a small group to complete a task or mission. But it has to be taken at the moment of exposure to the bioforming mechanism. Prepare a delivery method for this remedy. That raises the question. What is the mission? Assuming the Aphelion uses shields of some kind, I don't expect it will be easy to bypass their defenses. We may not be able to block the Aphelion's attack either. But if they do strike, we know their weapon uses transporter technology. We might be able to backtrack their signal path. Like we did to evacuate Captain Rydek from Tau. Exactly. We could send an away team onto the Aphelion. So we could destroy it from the inside. I'm not exactly sure how, but that's the idea. I think Portal could still help us. If he can't get a first-hand look at the Aphelion, he might be able to identify a weakness. After sparing the remnants of his civilization, I should hope he'd help us. He will. We'll need to prepare a boarding party, if it comes to that. Petty Officers Edsilar and Diaz are the logical choices to lead any away mission to the Aphelion. They have already crippled one enemy ship. If anyone can do so again, it is them. This isn't like the engineering mission that took you to the Zeldi. Do you really have some special insights that a tactical team wouldn't? Doesn't the fact that we're here speak for itself? Just surviving won't be enough this time. Sabotage is kind of becoming our specialty. We'll find a way to get the job done. Well, he certainly has the swagger for it. If this is the necessary course of action, I support it. With the help of Portal. You should be part of the away team. I will compile all the latest data on the tricorders, just in case. In the meantime, I want you working on ways we can combat the Takan tech. Shields, weapons, anything we can use. Yes, Captain. Anything else, Ambassador? I know this matter is in capable hands. Hold the line as best you can. Help is on the way. Thank you.
I have faith in all of you to meet this moment with the urgency it required. I expect all of us to give it everything we've got. Thank you, Petty Officers Diaz and Edsilar. You're dismissed. While we have a quorum of senior staff, there is a procedural element we need to take care of. The Resolute Command Codes must be transferred to Captain Rydak for control of the ship. Of course. Computer, transfer all command codes to Captain Jara Rydak. Voice authorization, Ermot, Echo 4 Lima. Voice authorization, Duval. Beta, 2, Yankee. Voice authorization, Westbrook. Alpha 7 Tango. Awaiting your authorization, Captain. Voice authorization, Rydek. Alpha, 5, Yankee. Captain's codes transfer. The updated command structure is incomplete. Please designate a new First Officer. Who is the new First Officer? Please designate a new First Officer. It is an honor and a pleasure to name Commander Westbrook as my new First Officer. Thank you. Captain, you made the right choice. Congratulations, Commander. It's long overdue. I know we've had our differences, but I can't tell you how much I appreciate this. Computer, Commander Westbrook is the new First Officer of the USS Resolute. Awaiting voice authorization. Voice authorization, Westbrook. Alpha 7 Tango. Authorization is now complete. Now, if you'll excuse me, there's work to be done. Nicely done. I think that went well. Captain, could I have a word with you? Give me a minute. Look, I respect your decision, Captain. Commander Westbrook has seniority, and I can understand why you might have felt pressure to promote him. But what I can't understand is why you would choose someone so clearly unsuited for the position. It's the very reason why Captain Solano chose you over him because he knew Westbrook, his first officer, would be disastrous. I know you're disappointed, but I trust his experience, and I need to rely on him now more than ever. But that's just it. We can't afford to make any mistakes. And that's my concern with Commander Westbrook. Maybe I've had it wrong this whole time, but I thought we've had an excellent working relationship almost from the moment you first arrived. Of course, I was insulted when you didn't trust me with the information about Captain Solano being compromised, but I've always supported you, which is certainly more than you can say about Westbrook. He was always against you, especially with regard to Captain Solano. But I guess loyalty counts for nothing, will you? Look, I'll be honest. I can't do this without your help. You're one of the best officers we've got, and I need you by my side. Otherwise, we don't have a chance against Galvin. It's as simple as that. And I'll be there when you need me. Just like I always have. in engineering. I can't raise them. Internal comms are down. It's the ionic interference. It's spiking again. If we reinitialize the central communications trunk, it should compensate. If I may, Captain. Communications are critical to ship operations. I should go take care of this. Go. I was hoping we could buy enough time until Starfleet could send more ships. 
It looks like we might have to face off against the Aphelion sooner than we might want. If it's just us, I don't like our chances. I'll consider any suggestions from my first officer. escape so easily after taking what's mine? How pathetic and predictable. At least you can take solace knowing you'll be a far braver to call than you were as a cowardly Koblia. Is it any wonder your people perished? If your every instinct is to run from a fight, you underestimate the lengths I'm willing to go to ensure you don't succeed. Sadly, this is as far as you'll get. We both know I hold your fate in the palm of my hand. That I could crush you in an instant if I so desired. And as much as I'd like to, you have another purpose to serve. As one of us. They were targeting the crew, not the ship. Captain, we have to respond. Hit him in the mouth. What are your orders? Fire photon torpedoes. Target the source of the beam. The Aphelion remains undamaged by the photon torpedoes, Captain. And its shields are fully intact. It's too powerful to take head on. Damage report from the lower decks. I still can't raise them, Captain. It could be that the system's down. Well, that was the Takan bioforming ray. And there's no one left down there to respond. Takan may already be on this ship. No way of knowing how bad it is yet. Get an urgent message to Starfleet Command. Tell them we've been hit by the Aphelion's bioforming ray. There may be hostile Takan aboard this ship. I'll notify them at once. Here are your new tricorders. Now go, get to the transporter room.
Huh. 